Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Last episode, we worked on replacing this old farm design with the minecarts, and we upgraded to using the Ender Isle farming station. Between episodes, I was gathering a bunch of resources to upgrade the soil for these plants up here. I also crafted some extra, which I think I'm actually going to make use of for things like the Pereskia and the Dugonia and things like that. And we'll stick them on elemental soil and use the vacuum hoppers actually to automate that rather than having to use the ender isle farmer since it doesn't need to be that fast. I also upgraded one of the matics with an extra modifier slot to give it fortune as the fortune effect is actually applied on the ender isle farmer. But this new farming setup other than being a mob farm <laughs> is going to more than double our power output once we build some more diesel generators. Yeah we need some lights in here. <laughs> So yeah, today I would like to build some more diesel generators and the one refinery setup can actually power two diesel generators. So I think we'll build another three diesel generators total and then another one of these setups with the fermenter, squeezer and refinery. And all that power should see us through and also allow us to upgrade our machines, which I would also like to get to today. I would like to expand out this machine room and have an area for thermal expansion and also for their ender IO machines to stop having to do things like this. We also moved over our excavator which has been running very nicely since between the episodes. We're already up to 20 stacks of osmium and I think I've actually put more than double that through our ore processing system. So that can probably actually get moved once again. But before we do any more upgrades I would like to look into the crafting terminal as this is going to make crafting all those components for the multi blocks a lot easier. So we looked at this briefly at the end of last episode and to get the crafting terminal we're going to need uh, either a sawmill or we can go this route. I'm leaning towards the sawmill though. So I think we should have an extra machine frame that we can use for this. There's our quest. And next we'll actually need the augment for the resin funnel. But once we craft the sawmill this will give us a chance at some rosin which has to go through the fact fractionating still. I've just stolen the one that was over here actually since I don't have another machine casing quite yet. So the rosin we have to alloy smelt with the resonant clathrates which we can find in the end dimension which is about 1500 blocks away so <laughs> I don't think we have any access to any sort of teleporter at the moment so we're gonna have to make this trip every time we want to go to the end for the time being. So after mining up all of the easily accessible resin and endor from the end, we have to, I think, pulverize this to get our clath rates. And you know what? I realized that we haven't even made the pulverizer yet. So instead, let's just uh, use the auto smelt on this. And now we can put this in the induction smelter to get our coated clath rates. And with these, we have to make some processors with them, which takes the estimation presses, which we found in the autumn dimension. And we only need a few of these things for now. But again, this is something we will be automating, which is the thing we need for the crafting terminal. All we're missing now is this formulaic assembly uh, these other components we have, and this looks like a fairly easy craft by this point. So there's our formulaic assembly I don't know if that's a quest actually, we should pick it up just in case. And now we can take our awful regular ME terminal and finally upgrade it to the ME crafting terminal. It's crafting time. <laughs> oh, and we got the trophy for it as well. Awesome. That also means that we can get rid of this big box and throw everything in our ME system. So it's still not quite auto crafting, we're not quite there yet, but it's a step up at least. So now that we have access to the crafting terminal, I think I'm going to craft some more of these multi blocks and we'll add the rest of our power capabilities now that we have the upgraded farm. And once we have more power, I would like to look into more of these thermal machines. Uh, primarily the compactor, which is going to let us do things like gears and also plates as well. This is much, much faster than using the metal press that we were using from Immersive.
Alright, so I've been doing some crafting and building. I only ended up building one more diesel generator for now as I realised that we don't quite have enough resources to fill out this whole room. But two of these diesel generators um, allow us to make, I think, 8,000 RF a tick. Just over 8,000 RF a tick. And I was hooking up the redstone again and I had a big spaghetti mess of like redstone wires going all the way around this diesel generator. Uh, so I looked into these wireless redstone receivers. So I have one transmitter on the output of this comparator, which I've actually changed the potentiometer to compare to a signal strength of 14. So that keeps the middle HV capacitor more or less full. And then all you have to do with these is set the frequency and then set the receivers on the same frequency. And it will just wirelessly transmit the redstone, which is much cleaner than running redstone wires all the way around this place. I still don't like that the diesel generators are mirrored. I would be nice to have the redstone on, on this side, but that then means putting the power output here, and that complicates things a little bit more. So it's going to be fine the way it is, I think. So we will at some point add the rest of those machines in there. But I was also working on this new machine room over here. So when I was building this, I wanted to get away from just doing one boxed room and some like straight corridors like what we have here and what seems to be a recurring theme in all my bases. So the plan for this room is to have all of this as open space. We'll have some machines on this wall here and then it's going to continue over this way into a big open room with filled with machines. And then we'll have the walkway over top with a really tall ceiling. But that's going to take some time to build and uh, <laughs> I would like to get on with some more tech today. So. The first thing I'd like to do is actually build some of these thermal expansion machines. And to do that, we're going to need a lot of these machine frames. So I'd like to actually batch craft this. To build these machine frames, we need a lot of diamonds, actually. We need diamonds for the GP powder. And we also need diamonds as part of these machine frames for atomic alloy. So I decided, as you saw, to move over this excavator. This has been running uh, actually not too long. But this is primarily a coal vein. But we do get a very small chance of diamond and emerald. So I already took out about a stack of diamonds from here. And we have some emeralds here, so that should be enough for us to at least progress. So I'd like to try to aim for 16 machine frames, and that means that we can upgrade some of them into the Ender IO machines, and we can use some of them for thermal. So I have been batch crafting loads and loads of plates and rods and things, because I knew that we would need this stuff, and it's... It's really difficult at this stage of the game because things get so expensive and I'm actually surprised we've made it this far with relatively little automation. But it's just because of the gated nature of this pack, really. So I've been making a bunch of glowstone ingots. Um, there's some refined obsidian here, I think. Some atomic alloy. Yeah, we have 57 of this stuff. You know what? I think we can actually get these 16 machine blocks, which we'll have to upgrade into the machine frames. Let's actually just start off with eight machine frames. We have the materials to upgrade the rest, but just in case we have to keep them as these extra utilities machine blocks. Man, there's so many different <laughs> different machine frames and blocks in this. So yeah, the first machine I would like to make is the compactor. So I think we'll put our compactor here where the old thermal machines were, uh, since I think this is going to be mostly a manual process until we unlock applied energistics. And I've also placed down our induction smelter here that we can use to batch craft. And then all the outputs just go into this chest here. So the compactor, as I mentioned, is going to allow us to make plates much faster. And this does take several upgrades. Although I was having a look at these things and they are very expensive in this pack. So you have to craft every tier of upgrade. The hardened one isn't too bad, but we do still have to look into mithril, which I think is something we'll look at next. The reinforced upgrade kits take flux electrum and zeologic controllers. The signalum ones take iridium plates. I mean, <laughs> this is just getting a bit like... And then, yeah, the resonant take black iron slates. And I have no clue what these things are. So we'll get to that, I guess, when we get to that. So yeah, let's move on and look at the next stages of progression, which is mithril ingots. And for this, it looks like we need platinum and cinnabar. And we also need these uh, thermal dusts. So to get all of these dusts, I think we'll do actually one fluid transposer per dust. I was just going to share one, but I think it's worth to slow down a bit and set up the infrastructure for this. Alright, so we have our four fluid transposers, one for each of the powder. Those are going to get output to a drawer each. And on the back we have some energy conduits along with some fluid conduits. The liquid AXP we can get from our mob farm here. Which we can just attach to this fluid conduit and that will fill our transposers. So these are going to take several different inputs. The first one we need is, I think, yeah, pulverized obsidian. We also need snowballs for the cryothium. Sulfur is the next input, which we can actually get from the naphtha processing that we had. And the last input is nitre. And all of these things we will have to fully automate. There's a, there's a couple of different methods that we could use, actually. This nitre we can get from blitz, which we can farm from the aether dimension. Or there is the easier thing of just pulverizing sandstone. 
but this gives us each of our dusts, which we then have to craft with more of the input items and some redstone to give the thermal foundation dust. And I actually don't have any more nitre, so we are going to set up some sandstone processing, uh, which means we will need a pulverizer. So after a bit more crafting, we can craft our pyrothium dust, erothium dust, the petrothium dust, and cryothium. Oh, we're out of snowballs. How are we going to get snowballs? Hmm. I guess we can make a glacial precipitator. You know what? A much cheaper option is just to come to Isica here. And we have tons of snowballs, which we can craft into cryothium dust. And there's our quest. And now we can mix all of those with RF powder, and this will give us mana dust. Very small amount to begin with, though. Oh, nice. It also gives us eight free RF powder. All right, so the next step for us is to look into getting some cinnabar. And this actually does spawn as ore, but we have four. <laughs> Which is nowhere near enough. Okay, so we can also get cinnabar though from crushing redstone or gold. And I think we should still have a bunch of gold ore from our old excavator setup. Okay, we only have one stack here. I may have to go mining today because we're getting low on things like oil sands as well. But let's just put this through our pulverizer and hopefully we get enough cinnabar. So while we wait on that cinnabar over there, I'm going to take some time and set up our dark dust processing again. So I made up another fluid transposer for this since I used the other one for these dusts. So again, the top input here is the magma crucible for pulverized coal. That goes into the first fractionating still where we get a chance output at some tar. This also gives us, uh, I think, yeah, naphtha, which goes into the second fractionating still, which gets refined into sulfur as a chance output and also refined fuel, which goes down to the fluid transposer where we have to combine that with our dark dust. So I guess we actually need a alloy smelter of some sort. We can use an induction smelter or an alloy smelter from Ender.io. Let's just go with the induction smelter for now since it's a bit cheaper, which I think we'll actually place here. And that means we, that we can use some item conduit to put inside the tar. And then I don't think there's any other reason we want to keep dark ingots as just dark ingots. I think we want to turn all of this into the energized version. So in that case, the output of this induction smelter is gonna to want to go into this fluid transposer. So we can just hook this up on the back and share the space with the energy conduits here. And that keeps everything nice and clean. So the inputs for this system is coal and also bitumen, which we do not have enough of right now. This is the only bitumen I have, so I will have to go mining if we need some more of this stuff. But once we hook this up, I think we're in business, so yeah. Once we get applied energistics though, this thing will be much easier to automate. We just have to hook up the interface and then everything else will be taken care of for us. And it's always a nice feeling to get these machines in place and start getting some things automated because yeah, we don't really have many things automated so far. But in that time, looks like we have six cinnabar. I don't know if that's enough for the quest. I think we may need more than that. Yeah, we need eight to progress. All right, so now that we have to use our cinnabar in the induction smelter with a bunch of nickel ore. And I have purposely been saving this nickel ore, as I knew we would have to process this. We should have quite a bit of it here. Yeah, we have over a stack. So this we can put in our induction smelter, and this will give us a 100% chance output at platinum. The cinnabar can also actually be used as the auxiliary reception coils, which is the speed upgrades for the thermal expansion machines. So this is probably well worth investing in. But again, we don't quite have enough cinnabar yet. But once we get our platinum, oh, we get some free Osgo lapis. Once we have the platinum, we can make mithril. And in this pack, Mithril is made with Mana Dust, Demon Lord Ingots, and Platinum. So this ingot is definitely not cheap, and it's going to take a lot of uh, auto-crafting to get set up. But the Demon Lord is Demon Ingots and Lunar Reactive Dust. So I made up a little bit more Mana Dust, and we can make our first Mithril Ingots. It takes everything. <laughs> it certainly does. We'll claim some free diamonds for this. And unlocking Mithril actually unlocks the next chapter for us, which is chapter 11. Looks like we got a lot of cool stuff in here. We have access to solar panels. This looks like uh, further mechanism machines and also industrial foregoing. We also get access to things like integrated dynamics over here and also RF tools. So to get started in industrial foregoing, we're gonna need to make some plastic. And plastic in this pack has actually been changed quite significantly. We need to get into some mechanism machines first of all, which also means that we have to make some of these electrolytic cores. These are going to take some of the mithril ingots we just made, some redstone alloy, some octatic capacitors, uh, which are actually <laughs> quite expensive still, and enhanced machine parts, which is the enhanced machine chassis. Oh, in fact, we haven't actually made this chassis yet. Hmm, okay, so this is going to take a lot more process than what, than what I first thought. Okay, I think first of all, let's actually take on a new project and automate grains of infinity. 
The Greens of Infinity are going to be used a lot in Ender.io and going forward we're going to be building a lot more Ender.io machines. And to automate Greens of Infinity I'm going to do it quite similar to the way they're in Omni Factory actually. So we're down here next to the mob farm and we're just going to I think make a new tunnel down here and we'll set up our Greens of Infinity automation in this room. So first of all I have to clear out this a little bit. We need about a chunk's worth of space and we're also going to need some Blazing Pyrothium. So this is actually a very very simple thing to automate. All we have to do is have some netherrack place down our blazing pyrothium and then every other block we place some netherrack when we place the netherrack there's a chance for this blazing pyrothium to set the netherrack on fire which also has a chance to spread to the bedrock but it's already starting to catch fire here and then yeah once bedrock um, extinguishes itself we have a chance at some grains of infinity so to pick up the drops we need a vacuum hopper i think the vacuum hopper is just going to be is going to be just fine for us Actually, I think we will have to upgrade to the absorption hopper for the increased range. So the hopper we have to try to get in the middle of this thing. We probably should have placed it before we let this place on fire though. So the hopper I'm going to place directly above the blazing pyrothium. And then just place a drawer on top. And we can lock this for grains of infinity. And in fact, I'm going to put a, a storage upgrade on this. And we'll put a void upgrade on as well. So let's just double check the radius here, make sure we have enough. Yeah, we will need a few range add-ons for this. But the range add-ons actually take mob grindium. <laughs> and this is, like, not a cheap ingot. Um, yeah, more lunar reactive dust, which is more Og Osglo Lapis. Let me uh, do some crafting and get the range add-ons we need. And as I'm recording today's episode, I, I've ended up cutting out quite a lot of what I've done over the last day. It's just because of the way things worked out with... Um, the amount of crafting and things. We're at a stage in the pack where, yeah, things are getting expensive and we don't have automation set up. So I think tomorrow, instead of the regular episode, we're going to do a little live stream. I started doing live streams during my FTB Interactions playthrough and they went really well and I, d I do enjoy them every now and then. So if you'd like to check out the live stream tomorrow, I think we'll be starting 12pm GMT and we'll go for the usual 5 hours. So if you're interested, check that out, but if not, the regular videos will continue on Tuesday. Alright, that should be enough mob grindium though for our absorption radius upgrades. And now with the upgrades, we should pick up pretty much all of the grains of infinity. I think there might be one or two drops that could land here, but I think it's fine. And this thing is completely passive and will generate us grains of infinity. Alright, so now that we have grains, we should be able to make these capacitors now. It is a bunch of uh, alloy still, which we are yet to automate, and for now we're just going to batch craft. So that leads us on to the enhanced machine parts, which takes these next tier of Ender.io machine casings, or machine chassis, which also takes the end steel chassis. So the sole machine chassis is what we used for the farming machine. We have made up to these ones. Let's use our existing machine frames that we crafted from earlier to make some more simple machine chassis. And then to upgrade these, we need more dark steel, refined obsidian, energized dark, and steel. All of those have actually been batch crafting, so we should have all of that stuff. So we have enough for 50 dark steel ingots. So now we can upgrade all of these to the industrial. And to take them up to soul, we need some more soul attuned dye. Can we make this? Oh, we can. But we can only get two. Okay, we need more nether quartz. And yeah, I was having a look at this. I think we're actually completely out of nether quartz. Yeah, we have like a tiny bit left. We also need just a little bit more organic brown dye. So we now have our sole machine chassis. To take these one step further into the end steel, well, we need end steel, <laughs> which is end stone, dark steel, and obsidian. So while we wait on the end steel, we also need some electrical steel, which is pulverized coal, iron, and silicon. Man, there is, there is so many different kinds of ingots in this game, and the fact that we don't have access to 82 yet makes things very tricky. But we are going to craft a whole stack of this stuff. But while we wait on that thing processing, we are back here at the end to collect some chorus flowers. And we need the chorus fruit to mix with the end steel to make our melodic alloy. And this is the thing that we make our enhanced machine frames with, which thankfully is the last tier of the machine frame. Alright, I didn't actually realise just how slow this alloy smelter was, so I th I think it probably is worth upgrading this thing right now. Unfortunately I did turn all of the machine chassis into the sole version and we need the tier below so I'm gonna have to craft up another another version of the industrial I think it is. Actually we need one more as well because we need two of the simple alloy smelters plus an industrial machine chassis to make uh, the regular alloy smeller. So we need two dark bimetal gears, some of the electrical steel that should be finished by now. And I'm also really glad that I have this crafting terminal because doing this without the crafting terminal <laughs> would be a nightmare. 
All right, so there's another simple one. We have to pick up our old one, which is just finished processing the last melodic alloy. And now we can upgrade this, finally, <laughs> to the regular alloy smeller. And the quest actually gives us 16 dark steel, which is amazing. I'm definitely going to claim that. I'm not going to leave that here. So to get this new one to work, we do need a capacitor for this. And then we have to make some more end steel. Uh, it's actually not that much faster, is it? Still an improvement nonetheless. Alright, so we got enough end steel. We have to make some end steel bars first of all. And then we can make our first end steel chassis. And we can only make one for now. And to upgrade this to the enhanced version, we need enhanced dye blend. We already have the melodic alloy. And this takes grains of piezality, which means... Oh, we need a sag mill for this. Oh no. <laughs> okay, can we make the sag mill? Almost. And after some more batch crafting, we have a sag mill. And to make our pulsating crystals, we need some more pulsating iron. And luckily we did set up our, our mob farm, so we have tons of ender pearls by now. But once we have our pulsating crystals, we can sag mill them for the grains of pizzali. Luckily this is faster than the alloy smelter is. Oh, it was eight we need. We only get two dye blend per, and we need four dye blend. Oh no, okay. All right, we got the rest of the grains. We can make our enhanced dye blend. And then upgrade our end steel chassis into the enhanced machine chassis. One of many, I assume. Which gives us some free end steel as well, which is nice. So the enhanced machine chassis lets us build many of these enhanced machines, which are obviously much faster. But these enhanced machines are ridiculously expensive. They take four of the regular machines, or most of them take at least two machine chassis each. So I don't think we'll be making those for a little while. But with our enhanced machine chassis, we're going to crush it down and we're going to make machine parts. And then with this, we can almost craft our electrolytic cores. For this though, we need some sentient enders, which is going to require our soul binder setup again. And that's going to take ages to do that. So I'm kind of running out of time today. So I think we're going to wrap up here. I didn't get quite as much done as I would have liked today, but that's kind of the nature when you're doing daily uploads. The pack is definitely getting a bit more challenging now, but it's still a lot of fun. I'm having a blast doing these. But if you're interested, check out the live stream tomorrow. But that's going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.